Hey everyone, just want to show you today how to fix your heated seat. If it does like mine, you push the button, lights go out. Sometimes they stay on longer. Basically what's that telling me is that I have a problem in somewhere in the whole heated seat system. And it's not likely the module. I'll show you how I fixed it. I've already fixed the passenger seat. Uh, heated seat, it works good. There's a lot of complaints coming from that side, so I fixed it first. Now I'm going to go ahead and fix the driver's side and I'll show you how you did it. It's not very easy and it's not very quick, but it is a fix and it's not that expensive. Here's the kit I bought from, I ordered it in from the Amazons. It's basically a universal heat seating kit from Dorman and I'll show you what it looks like. The chances are it's the element in the seat cushion here. It's like 95% of the time this is what goes in your vehicle. There's also one up the back, but because you're not really sitting on this, uh, nothing really ever happens to it. Your seat here gets the flex and the element from your butt constantly. And that just wears it out and creates an even more dead short than you're already creating to get heat. So this kit is basically for somebody that doesn't even have heated seats. You could put them in. It comes with uh, a nice switch here on a low and a high setting. So this is basically what we're looking at here. This is the heated seat element we're going to put in. It just looks like this. We're going to slide it in over top of the old one. We're not even going to take anything out because the heated seat system in here is part of the cooling system as well. And I think it's about five or six hundred bones to replace the whole set. I'm going to uh, cut this connector off and just splice it into the factory harness so that everything remains factory. We're going to go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we have to remove the seat. Uh, we're going to take the back off and completely disassemble it. It sounds scary, but it's really not that bad. Like I said, I did the passenger side. By no means am I a, an upholstery guy, but um, I think this is something that anybody with a little bit of time and, and uh, talent and ambition could do. So the first thing to do to remove this seat here is there's a bolt on the front and there's a cover over this one. We just have to pull this off. There it is. It's exposed. So I believe these are 15 mil and there'll be two more at the back. So we'll just go ahead and take these out now. Those two are out. Slide your seat forward so you can get to the back ones a little easier through the back door. And if I remember right, the back ones are 13 mil, but we'll have a look. Okay, here are the back two bolts, and I lied, they're actually bigger. They are a 18 mil. Once the seat's unbolted, there's uh, three connections underneath the seat that have to be removed in order to pull it out. It's for actually the heated seat element and the power motor. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect those three, and then we'll pull the seat out. Well, we've got the seat removed, so now's a good time to go and get those old French fries and whatnot that have been stuck under there for years. So here's what we're looking at. Got to pop off some trim here. Once we lift this back flap up, it's just got a couple plastic clips. There's two Phillips screws we have to undo. The driver's side's a little bit different than the passenger side because there's a few more controls. So there's a screw at the back here that has to come out in order to get this trim panel off. And this trim panel in the trim panel needs to come out. It's got three connections behind it. They just plug in, as you can see here. So that's got to come off in order to get this giant screw out. Now that that's out, this should pop off. Just like that. And don't lose the screw. All right, so this side's done. Now we'll take apart the other side. There's two screws here that hold this tr piece of trim on. And the other one is hidden behind the seat belt right here. I'll take that out. And that should come off now. Oh, just like that. 
once we've got those trim pieces off either side, we're going to take these two bolts out right here and that should separate this back piece off of the seat. These bolts here that hold the back on are 13 mil. There, uninstalled. So like I said earlier, this backrest has a heated seat portion in it and also lumbar adjustments and stuff. And this is through this harness right here. So we'll go ahead and unplug that so we can remove this back seat completely. There it is, the seat split in half, doesn't take much. So now we're gonna go ahead and flip this upholstery up right here. I'll lift the seat up on the tailgate so I can work on it. I have the wiring diagram for the seat and I've gone ahead and already diagnosed it, uh, which wires need to go where to hook up this seat and also diagnosed that it was the element in the seat. So if you choose to replace this at your own risk, uh, like I said earlier, chances are it is the element in the seat and it's a fairly cheap fix. It just requires some of your time, but that's up to you. If you want to try this without diagnosing it, and even if you do bring it to your dealership or wherever you bring your vehicle and you get it diagnosed and they tell you it's in the seat, then you can go from there. But if the shop you bring it to, if they do tell you that it is your element in your seat or it's the element on the back or the seat, uh, it's definitely the seat, like I said, 95% of the time. So anyway, let's, uh, let's have a look inside here. So basically all I've done is just unclip this black plastic piece from down here and you can see your heating element right here. It's built into the airbag that cools your seat as well. So all I'm going to do without disrupting anything is slide this new element right in between here. So the nice thing with this replacement element is that it is actually uh, porous. It's just a cloth material and you can blow through it. Which is good because if you ever turn on your cooling feature in your seats, it's still going to work. It's going to blow right through this and you ain't going to have a problem. And it's got some tape on the bottom side here, two-way tape that you can unstick while you've got it in place. Don't unstick it before, you'll never get it in. And that'll just hold it so it doesn't bunch up and you just feel like you're sitting on your wallet all the time. So let's, uh, let's stuff this thing in. I think my battery died, but anyway, we've got the heated seat element in there. Just like that and really take your time to make sure it's flat because if it's not, as soon as you sit on it, you'll feel something just ain't right. So now we're just going to go ahead and splice in our electrical. Here's a look at the harness coming off the factory heating element. The two black wires here with the red tracer, they're actually sensing, there's a sensor inside the pad. It'll shut off if it gets too hot. So we don't need to touch those, they can stay in place and they'll actually still be useful because the new heating element is just sitting on top of the old one and that'll detect anything should it overheat. And the two wires that we do want to splice off of this four wire connector are the yellow and black. And for this today we are going to attach the red wire from the aftermarket heating element to the yellow and black to black. So we'll go ahead and solder those up, heat shrink them up, tape them up and it'll be ready to reinstall. Soldering's done. Heat shrink is on. Put it in the little groove right here. Plug it back into the connector. like that. Now we'll tuck this back up and under. So 
we've got our heating element in the seat and now it's time to put the seat back together and then put it in the truck and then do the moment of truth so this job for setting up the backrest back onto the cushion is a lot easier with two people i don't have two people we're just gonna have to make do that flap until later we'll go ahead and put these controls back in here so the first thing we want to do is mount this piece of trim back up there are some clips that just hold it into place snap in tighten up our Phillips here now we just have to put our controls back in place try this with one hand and the third one. All right, we got all our connectors back in place. This thing just pushes in. Don't forget our screw on the back. As you can see here, I got the seat all mounted, plugged back in just to save me some time, save you some time, so this wasn't a brutal video. I mean, you saw the outstall. I'm sure if you could take it out, you can put it back in. So now we'll hop inside and we'll test it out. Might as well turn on the passengers too. Lights are staying on. That's a good sign so far. Now we'll just wait for some heat. Well, I got to tell you, I was a little bit nervous for a second. It took a minute or two. It's been so long, I don't even think I've had heated seats in this truck since I bought it. Anyway, they were just intermittent, or it wouldn't work at all. I can't remember, but I know mine hasn't worked in forever. But I can feel my butt starting to heat up, and that's amazing. That's going to be so nice this winter. So there you go. There's my little uh, tip on fixing your heated seat, if that's the way you choose to go. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than getting it done factory, or through the dealership, anyway. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helps somebody fix their heated seat. And by all means, if you're thinking about doing it, I say go for it. Clearly a job that anybody can do with a little bit of talent, including myself. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.